Hi, welcome to Stitches TV. I'm Tree and today we're going to make this fantastic cow neck top. And do you know what? To make this cow neck top, all you need is a regular t-shirt and we use it as a pattern. I will show you how to create the cow neck. To make your cow neck t-shirt you need about a metre of fabric and you need an existing t-shirt that you like the fit of. When you want to use a t-shirt as a pattern you need to get it as two dimensional and flat as possible. Now with t-shirts very often after a while they become all ski whiffy so it is quite tricky but just press it as well as you can and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut it so that you end up with a front and a back so here we go so i actually quite like i actually quite like this t-shirt as well right so i'm going to cut along the shoulder and i'm going to keep going because for this top it's just got sleeves incorporated into the shape so we're not doing inset sleeves so I'm going to cut down the other shoulder and then we're just going to cut down the side seams. So you'll end up with a front and a back. Now what you need to do, you, you're going to use this, this is going to be your pattern, but you need to trace it out on some paper because you have to add seam allowance all the way around. Now also, when you add your seam allowance on the side, maybe add a little bit extra because the fabric that you're using may not have the same amount of stretch as the original t-shirt and you can always take it in a bit on the sides. Now this is the most important thing about making your cow neck top. Look at this, it's a really good trick. So before we lay our t-shirt onto the paper, to create our pattern. This, so this is the back and this is the front. Now to create the cow neck we need extra fullness here in the front. So what we're going to do, we're going to roughly get the centre and yet yeah, look we're going to cut all the way down. I usually like to cut down as far as to maybe where my belly button might be, I think it's roughly about there, and then depending Depending upon how much you open this out will determine how much of a cow you you know, how much fullness you'll have in your cow neck. You need to cut your pattern out on paper. Now here's one I made earlier. So look, it wasn't from this t-shirt, it was from another t-shirt, but it's the same kind of thing. So this is the back. You fold over the back. So when you do cut out your t-shirt, that, see that, that says to a fold, you lay it onto the paper and then you ignore the fact that there is a seam here for the sleeves and you're just going to follow roughly the shape, make it a bit wide in the armpit and follow it roughly around the sides. Now my original t-shirt was a bit bigger so it looks like this. So that's the back. Now for the all important front. So, when you do the front, can you see? So I've opened it out. See where the shoulder line begins? It begins in the same place. And I've opened it out and I've just roughly gone straight for the, along the shoulder, ignoring the fact that there's a sleeve. I've come down and I've roughly gone in on the armpit and then roughly out. But this is the very, very important bit. When you come to the neck, Okay, when you come to the neck, you don't take any notice of the fact that it had a crew neck on it. You just go straight across, all the way straight across. Now it's a very good idea when you do that, to have your fabric already folded. So we've got the neck open, the shoulder here and the shoulder there. We're going straight across. Our paper is folded because that's going to become the facing and if you already have it folded before you cut it out then your facing is going to fit perfectly. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? No. <laughs> <laughs> it will all make sense in a minute. 
Ah, one more thing. Because we're opening it out here, we're basically losing, see how when we open it out, we get this kind of pleat here. So we're losing about an inch there. So just remember, you have to make it about an inch longer than your back, otherwise they won't match up. All we've got to do now is cut it out, but I just want to talk about that. So we've got one piece for the front, which could be to the fold, but it isn't. <laughs> so I've laid that on top of the fabric with the right side up. And then we've got the back piece, which we've done to a fold. So I folded the fabric right sides together and laid it on top. So I'm gonna cut out the front first, which is straightforward because we've already allowed all the seam allowances. So all we do is just cut around it. Let's get sewing. The first thing we're going to do is finish off the back neck. Now, if you've got an overlocker or it's known in the States as a serger, I think that's right. You've got to zigzag or overlock the edge first. And then all we're going to do is just press it back first and then we're going to sew it. So we're going to zigzag ours today because not everybody is lucky enough to have an overlocker. So on the mini JL, it's F and we just zigzag that edge. Zigzag the edge. Now I'm going to press it back with a little hem. So as we press it, I'm sort of stretching it around there to get it into the shape that I want it to be because Jersey is quite flexible. And then I'm just going to go in and just sew it. Do you know what? I always forget something, don't I? I forgot to change the needle to a stretch needle. Sometimes you can get away with a universal needle, but it doesn't seem to be allowing me to do that today. So you need to get yourself some stretch needles and they come in different sizes. So this is for the back neck. That's our zigzag bit. So then when you sew the hem on the back of that neck, Okay, on the mini JL it's a straight stitch which is D and we're sewing on the right side and we're feeling where the hem is. Honestly, it really is the best way to do it and then you can do it without any pins. Now the shoulders. We put the fabrics right sides together and then if you come and have a look, we've got to line up our neck. Now. We are, when we work with lines, stripes, we are supposed to line them up properly. So you line up your shoulder and it's kind of quite important that that exactly goes to where that little, where it goes in, where the V goes in of the facing. So you're gonna start there using a straight stitch and you're gonna sew all the way down. Now this bit is important. You see where the V bit is, where it goes in, that must, touch the tip of the other shoulder and then you stop here and go backwards and forwards. So that's one shoulder sewn together. You need to do the other shoulder as well and then zigzag the edges. We've got the two shoulders done and we've zigzagged them and now I'm going to show you how to neatly attach the facing but before we do that we do have to overlock or zigzag the edge of that facing there. So that's F on the mini JL for zigzag. This is how to finish off the facing. We've zigzagged the edge of the facing so we've finished off the edge. That's the back neck. This is the facing. I'm going to bring it around. I'm going to make it in line with that shoulder seam, in line with the shoulder seam, see that? And I'm going to sew along that shoulder seam line, coming all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way along to there, and I'm going to stop there, go backwards and forwards. So I'm going to do that now using a straight stitch. So I've turned it to D on the mini JL. I'm going to go backwards and forwards to start, so my threads don't come undone. And then I'm just going to follow that shoulder seam. See, that's the facing and still no pins. I'm just following the shoulder seam and you wait, you'll be, you'll be so impressed 
when you see how it finishes it off. That's what we've just done. And we would probably zigzag that edge. I'm going to carefully turn it around and you end up, should I put it the right way round, Esther? Yeah. Actually, because then it makes a bit more sense, doesn't it? So you've basically just done this, look. So you've finished off that. So you've got your finished off back and then you've got the beginning of your cowl on that side. It's easy. So we're inside out. We just need to do the same on the other side. Now it's really easy to get it wrong. Okay, we're inside out. So I'm bringing that around to the back, making sure, bring it around to the back, folding it over exactly at that point there where it went in, laying it along the shoulder, and I'm just gonna stitch along the same stitch line using a straight stitch. That's the other side, so I'm gonna put it like that, and then I'm gonna turn the top the right way round so you can really see what we've done. The reason why we did the facing like that, so that this is just all, look, it's all one continuous piece. So you just tuck that in and look how neat that shoulder is, apart from that little thread sticking up. Now all we have to do is finish off the hem on the sleeves, stitch up the side seam and then do the hem. But I'm gonna talk you through all of that and it's easy. For the sleeves, we've got to zigzag both sides and then I'm going to show you how to hem them. I've zigzagged both of the sleeves. Now I'm going to press them into shape with the iron. Now I want about an inch of a hem, about two centimetres. Like that. It is better when you're hemming stretch fabric to do a twin needle. Now I could just go and do it for straight stitch, but do you know what, it just looks better, it functions better, and you can actually do it for mini JL as well. We've got our double needle and we're ready to hem the sleeves. Now, I'm gonna say this, look, see how that doesn't finish at the same place as that? It really doesn't matter, it'll get incorporated as you curve around doing the side seam. So, you get it underneath the sewing machine. Now we're doing a twin needle hem. Come and have a look. We're sewing on the top side of the fabric. We can see where the hem is underneath. I've got the edge of my sewing foot where I can see the edge of the fabric underneath, yeah? And we just sew straight and it does. Is it doing a nice twin needle stitch, Esther? Yes, it is. Brilliant. And because on the other side, it sort of zigzags, it means that that will have a little bit of stretch in it, which is why we use it on stretchy fabrics for hemming. So that's what we've got, and then you do the same on the other side. Now I find going backwards and forwards at the end of the seams with twin needles, it can tie itself up in knots, so just go right to the edge. Don't be afraid, when you go over the thick bits, don't be afraid to use the wheel on the side if it's struggling a bit over the thick bits. Because once you get past that thick bit, then you're fine just to use the foot, the pedal. So we've got both of our sleeves hemmed. Now we're going to sew the side seams. So to do that, we put the fabric right sides together so the t-shirt's going inside out now. It should be quite obvious, really. I'm lining up the sleeve hem, lining up, I should be lining up the lines, gosh, and they're really not lining up. Um, I'm lining up the curve and feeding it all the way down. And I might, do you know what? I might, because I'm pinless at stitchless, so I might just give myself a couple of notches to use as a sewing guide on the way down. So if I line up those notches and I get to there, then I go to the next notch and then I go down. Using a straight stitch. Oh no, you're gonna hate me. We've got to change the twin needle back to the single stretch needle. Also, don't forget you had two threads coming down there, so you've got to reinstate it back to one thread. Now we're ready to sew. We're going to do about a centimetre of a seam allowance, which is like a small half inch. We're going to go backwards and forwards using straight stitch. 
D on the Mini JL. And then I'm going to line up those notches that I just created so I can keep track. That's my notch there. And a little bit of stretch as you sew. Now you have to zigzag that edge and then you do the same on the other side. Now's the time to try it on because when you make your t-shirt in a different fabric, you kind of end up wanting it a different length to the original t-shirt sometimes. I thought it looked a bit frumpy being so long, so I'm just gonna log off about that much. I don't know how much it is, but by eye, it looks right. Now for you, you, would zigzag or overlock the hem. For me, I'm gonna to have to pick up my kids in a minute. So we are just gonna go straight into hemming it. I'm gonna press it with the iron first and then I'm gonna twin needle it. We're at that really exciting last bit. So we're hemming the t-shirt. We're using twin needle. I've already changed the needle because I've shown you how to do that. And off we go. Now when you do the hem, it is a place where there's going to be a little bit of stretch going on, pulling it over your head and stuff like that. So I do advise you to stretch it a little bit as you sew, but not don't go crazy, okay? So thick bit, I'm just going to turn the wheel and staying equidistant from the edge. I think I'm probably going to stay around there, stretching a little bit. Go all the way around and then we'll meet up again at the end. Do you want to see it? It looks really good. I know that sounds really big headed, but look. Wow. So we made this very cool, gorgeous cow neck top in about an hour, <clears throat> a bit. <laughs> <laughs> And we made the pattern just from a regular t-shirt. It's so easy. Can I say one more thing before I go? Make it longer. And it's a gorgeous little black dress. Thank you so much for watching Stitches TV. I mean it, I love it so much. And those comments, they make my day. And the pictures, those pictures are fantastic. Thanks to Brenda. Brenda made a gorgeous, loads in fact, of bucket dresses, bucket pocket dresses. Thanks a lot, Brenda. Keep all those comments coming. Bye.